So it's courtesy of BBC News. It says Etsy. Weird one, right? Etsy snaps up Gen Z focus shopping app Depop for $1.6 billion. Madness, right? Obviously, good to see Shibon Bell on there. But let's look at the article itself. It says here, Etsy is buying Depop, a UK-based second-hand fashion app, in a bid to target younger Gen Z shoppers. The $1.6 billion, $1.4 $1.14 billion deal was announced on Wednesday and expected to go through later this year. Etsy boss Josh Silverman described Depop as a resale home for Gen Z consumers. About 90% of Depop users are under the age of 26 with young shoppers placing importance on shopping in a more sustainable way. Mm, is it because of that or is it just because it's trendy? I don't know if they care about sustainability too tough. Do you really think some of those under 26 year olds on Depop are recycling and, you know, <laughs> planting trees and giving their time to NGOs and working on eco farms and stuff. I don't think so. But hey, we continue. The app, which was founded in London in 2011, lets users buy and sell used clothing through its online marketplace. Depop combines its shopping element with Instagram-style uh, direct messages so buyers and sellers can negotiate on prices and postage. It now accounts more than 30 million registered users in total of 150 countries. The SEO, however, tends to skew towards older customers with crafts and goods and, and vintage items on offer from sellers. It's a very interesting one, isn't it? Like, I used to work at Depop a while ago. This is a few years ago, maybe like more than five years ago, I think it was, right? And at the time that I was there, it came, it went from two offices. It went from an office near Old Street somewhere, and now they've got this bang, spanking, amazing office near Shoreditch somewhere. That's really, really nice. Um, open plan, you know, great, you know, warmth in here and, you know, stairs and in the heart of kind of East London. Great little team that works there, Malarkey. Um, and I always kind of viewed it mostly as a very, again, Gen Z centric brand. And I'd probably say even maybe younger than 26, right? The people that are generally on there are really killing it. And the kids that are on there killing it are absolutely slaying, slaying, like making, you know, money hands over fist. It's just unfair how easy some of these people find it in terms of shifting some of the products that they do on there. But the, it really is a bit of an odd one in terms of a buy. You'd imagine because maybe nowadays, lately in the last couple of years, I've seen a lot more sellers on Etsy maybe selling more like kind of kind of um, items that you would maybe think would be targeted towards a more of a younger audience right i've seen a lot of people on there selling you know stuff like um you know those, you know that brand heaven mark jacobs new brand that he's got at the moment i've seen a lot of people selling kind of copies or variations or imitations of the sort of like massive chunky wedge shoulder boots that he does i've seen people doing sort of like handmade version of the tabby high heel boot as well i've seen people do variations of other sort of like younger items that they've made you know maybe sold or sold on, on depop and then made specifically to order on it see so there's kind of a little bit of an overlap there but overall in terms of the ui in terms of the you know the overall vibe of the company there's legitimately no overlap maybe there's an overlap in terms of the entrepreneurial side of things right people are kind of you know it's as well people are very hands-on in terms of how they start their business how they operate it what they display the kind of copy they use and all that malarkey and depop has the same sort of feel right even though the pages are quite formulaic every sort of different store has a different sort of vibe around it how they take the pictures the models they use the copy they use the pricing how they ship it's all kind of informs the appeal of each shop and of course i've seen recently a couple of people that i know still work there did some like in real life sort of like pop-up event thing where they kind of I, it, I guess but i guess it looks like they hired out space and made people come in with the actual items and put that up there that might be something going with it for that might be a good angle but i don't know man i don't just i don't necessarily see this on the cards at all but maybe this is the reason why you know high um functioning ceos and operators on that level are paid out big bucks because they definitely must have seen something in depop that they feel like they can either tap into learn from or kind of absorb into etsy because that's the only thing if you're if you're an avid depop person you might be a little bit concerned because this might spell the end of you know the depop that you knew and loved because it's very rarely do when kind of parent companies absorb companies like a depop very rarely do things remain the same things will definitely maybe change for the worse um 
maybe not maybe they will but you know I, I, it's, it's it's hard to imagine that a lot of the things that people love about Deep Purple will remain the same for sure they'll kind of change or maybe they won't maybe they just might see it as a chance to kind of tap into a younger audience and they're going to take all the kind of good things that people do and try to kind of copy them into what they do in Etsy that might be a good idea or maybe it's just see the talent maybe they think the talent that works at Deep Purple is just so incredible and the way they've been able to scale the company right we year in year out I'm sure the numbers have gone up and all that malarkey in terms of sales and turnover, blah, 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 profit, who knows, whatever. I'm not really, you know, familiar with the numbers and all that malarkey, but I assume that could be one of the things as well. The talent pool they just want to kind of tap into. Who knows? But I definitely did see this one coming. It says here, yeah, Etsy's chief executive, Mr. Silver, added in a statement, the Europe is a vibrant two-sided marketplace with a passionate community and high um, differentiated offering of unique items that we believe the significant potential to further scale. It added that the deal would allow Depop to further expand. And although it will still be based in London and run by its existing team, oof, that's always a kind of like, you know, that's always a... Um, that's equivalent to like in football when it when the kind of owner says to the manager, yeah, we're gonna give him time. That's always a kiss of death, isn't it? When a super says out of that, so it's like, watch your p's and q's, and it because things are gonna change either very quickly or not at all. So let's continue. So Deepo executive um, Maria Raga said, we're on an incredible journey to building Deepo into a place where the next generation comes to explore unique fashion and be a part of the community that's changing the way we shop. They come to Deepo for the clothes, but stay for the culture. After the deal was complete, Etsy would be home to free brands, Etsy, Depop and Reverb, an online marketplace to sell and use musical instruments. Bloody hell, man. There's an online place for musical instruments. Shoot me in the head, innit? That must be one of the most boring places to work. Um, we saw firms such as Depop and eBay and Vinted at Benefit. Yeah, Vinted, I see every on my YouTube, man. It's always kind of, hey, this is Vinted. You want to get rid of your old clutter? All that sort of bullshit. I benefit from the consumer being stuck at home during lockdown and sales and listening to items spiking. According to analytics from Global Data, that trend is set to continue with the resale clothing market set to reach 64 billion in the next five years. God almighty. With these numbers, now you understand why they decided to tap into Depop, innit? Um, Neil Saunders mentioned, wasn't there another app too that did resell items that folded? What was that one called? It was a UK one. Not Vinted, it was another one too. Marshallo, was it? Mercari, is it Mercari? Mercury or something like that? Meraki or something like that. Anyway, one of those ones failed. So that's a, maybe another cautionary tale in that one, isn't it? For every Depop on Etsy and Vinted, there's always a Meraki. I forgot what it was called. Something like that. Anyway, continues. Neil Saunders, Managing Director of Global Data, over the next 10 years, it will become larger still, fueled by the interest in sustainability and desire to uniqueness and a rise in the, in the practice. Uh, what's, that, what's that? How do you say that? Partici participatory consumer who wants to trade as well as buy. This whole sustainability thing, I think, is a misnomer. I don't think people are, are buying vintage stuff on Depop for sustainability reasons. It's mostly to differentiate yourself from everybody else. It's a desire to be unique. You know, it's kind of maybe a response to how shit the high street is. There was a time where the high street was fairly interesting and there was kind of cool new things happening in different stores all the time. But uh, what recently I saw like an ad for the new seasons of Zara Women's and it was all like boho stuff that, you know, went out of style like 10 years ago. You don't see anyone wearing anymore. So it's like, I don't see, you know, the, the, the high street sort of lost to a lot of these fast fashion brand things online, like the fashion overs and all that malarkey. So kids now, Nowadays, are trying to go as far back as possible to get stuff that's gonna differentiate them from their crowd and for you know from their peers. Especially for that age, the the need to differentiate yourself and be you know unique is very strong. And why you know the best place to do it is definitely a place like Depop. Especially when it comes to value for money, you can find stuff on there. You know, price of course you know shipping wise is gonna be a bit of a flip of a coin. But in terms of pricing, you can get entire outfits on there. You know, far better value and with more sort of like um life in them for 100 quid and you could ever get on the high street for sure he pointed out that the market is however becoming more crowded and apps forced to fight for consumers attention people have also faced questions in parts of a security of his app as well as a stolen goods as well as one crop top made out of ch uh, children railway <laughs> sneak cover oh god i love it but yeah let's see man i don't know let's see it's it's good for them happy for everybody that is still there some of my colleagues that are probably still working there i never really got you know i was 
I kind of left obviously because I wanted to seek other pastures new but I was never really you know enamored with the idea of having a core job I think some people you know, for some people it's amazing being able to work in a place like that and have your kind of you know be able to be part of making history and making a change and all that malarkey but I just always saw it as a job it never really was something that kind of uh, bothered me where I worked but in terms of the culture it definitely was one of the better places I worked in definitely a cool group of people people trying to you know do good things um, especially the customers support team that i was in obviously people cared about you know doing a good job cared about providing good service that was always kind of at the forefront of things the leadership was fairly decent when it comes to like a startup you know a couple of cunts here and there but overall everyone was fairly sound so yeah it's it's beneficial for all those guys hopefully everyone kind of had a piece of the pie and was don't know if people got shares hopefully they did if they didn't then hopefully they can get them now because i guess etsy is publicly traded so there's an option to kind of tap in that way and who knows man this might be the beginning of crazy new things it'll be great to see if they kind of decide to do some fulfillment center stuff that would be awesome if they happen to kind of have an idea where they can kind of maybe you know decide to take the inventory of some of the top 100 sellers i don't know wherever whatever region and have a fulfillment center so they can just process those orders really quickly and get the items out because one thing that kind of slows down the traction of a depop is the idea that you are essentially dealing with independent people who have their own time schedules their own lives and things go out when they go out and that was always the thing that always broke my heart working in a customer service team whenever you see a girl kind of contact the you know for help and be like oh i really wanted this dress for a graduation or for a party on the weekend and i ordered it with enough time ahead you know two weeks and it still hasn't arrived and you're like oh yeah you know i mean and you see the dress and it clearly is a kind of dress that can only be worn for like a party it's not something that's going to be very versatile day to day and then it's not arriving and that's always kind of broke my heart that way and, so, and it usually happened with bigger sellers because you know it's just the volume was just too much to kind of keep an eye on and you know life gets in the way and you know you can take your eye off the ball so take your your eye off the ball right is that right the eye off the ball yeah <laughs> so it'd be quite beneficial if they decided to kind of you know decided to take some of that inventory on and just did like a fulfillment center thing for some of the higher sellers and that also could be a good way to kind of generate some income because you could charge them a certain fee or you could take a cut out some of the profits whatever it may be that'd be a great way to kind of be able to push that thing forward and really take people to the next level because um that could um definitely give cuffs confidence confidence to some of the customers who decide to use the app itself but yeah 1.6 billion is nothing to joke about who knows if this will become a success or not i didn't really see it on the cards really etsy buying depot but hey here we are companies absorbing companies it's an age old story <laughs>